I've got a couple of gravel events under my belt now. The Rift in Iceland. Man, this is savage. Gravel Epic in Switzerland. Oh God, this is a tough one. And while I've very much enjoyed them and they're loads of fun, I'm still very much a gravel noob. So today I'm gonna go for a ride with gravel pro Ian Boswell. We're gonna be riding here on the perimeter path around the beautiful Imba Range in Southern England. This is a military firing range. Hopefully there's that's gunfire. Don't know if you can hear it. Hopefully today I'm gonna to get some gravel tips off Ian and also learn what it's like going from Tour de France pro to king of gravel. Good see on, you, Ian. Yeah, you too, oh, man. Look at that. That's the awkward. It, this is what you do now. You just yeah, awkward, I know. Like, Sometimes I get the, yeah, I know. the elbow. Yeah. Well, good to see you anyway. Yeah, you too. Um, what brings you to the UK? Uh, here for the Ruler Classic, and uh, since I'm traveling, I figured I'd bring a bike because it's always nice to ride new spots. Nice. Well, I'm glad you did. Have you ridden around these parts before in the UK much before? I have not. I've done uh, Tour Yorkshire a couple times and the Surrey Classic when it was happening, and I did the Olympic Test Race in 2011. But all on all on paved services and all north from where we are now. Well, well, today we've got some Southern England gravel for you. We're going to be riding on the 48-kilometer perimeter path of the Imber Range, which is starts sort of here. So yeah. Get cracking. Yeah, well, I'm excited to uh, ride some some British gravel. And I heard that you've done a few races, but you're uh, looking for some tips. So we'll see. I need all the help I can get. Yeah. So we'll we'll take you out. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll ride behind you. See what see what's going on, and we can. Uh, right. Yeah. I'll give you some pointers. Nice. Let's do it. Uh, by the way, just don't go anywhere on that side of the fence because. Um, that's a hot range. Yeah, I've the, heard the some. Brit <laughs> the British Army are letting rip. I've heard some gunfire riding in. Imber Village. Fun fact for you, Ian, right? So this is the perimeter road of a live firing range for the British Army. But inside it is a German village, right? And that's because in World War II, they built like a fake German village down there. Well, it was a real village. They cleared the people out and then they made it a fake German village and the US Army practiced on it for D-Day in there. Today, the British Army are practicing on it, like shooting stuff. So um, we'll be okay as long as we don't go in there. Don't go past the stop sign. Yeah. <laughs> What do you make of that, Ian? That's a big old, <laughs> yeah. big old old horse. Yeah. That's, that's the Westbury White Horse. Showing you all the sights today. Yeah, it's uh, been quite the uh, historical tour so far. Well, that was built in 878 by, uh, well, to commemorate King Alfred's victory at the Battle of Ethendon. Did, I don't know that one, but yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll look it up when I get back. Sure right. you will. Back. Anyway. <laughs> so how's it gone from going from like, you know, Tour de France Pro over to like gravel racing now then how's it different yeah it's been uh it's been a learning experience but it's been fun to you know do something that i'm so familiar with which is you know riding and racing bikes but then be at times so out of my element you know from the bikes are similar but you know tire pressure is different you know the equipment's different the races are all completely new and foreign to me yeah. so it's been fun to have this knowledge of bike racing and then go to something where I don't, but you know, essentially I'm learning constantly. You know, every race you go to is different and the races are different and, you know, just even the, the tactics and the strategy and the people you're racing against, it's all constantly changing and new and different. And I think it's the beauty of uh, kind of the sport of cycling is there's always some new way to, to kind of explore something you're already familiar with. Yeah. Well, you say you, you knew you knew it and stuff, but wait, pretty impressive winner, Unbound. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was my second ever gravel race, so. It was, you know, I'm still kind of new to it. I mean, I would say that race in particular is, you know, there's a lot of traits that kind of come over from, from road racing. You know, you start in this big pack and it's, you know, 200 miles, so it's, it's a long one. Um, but, I mean, I feel like at times 
being kind of naive is maybe a, a benefit, you know, especially at that race, you know, I was always racing a little bit conservatively and just trying to be, you know, almost saw it as like a video game where it's like, cool, I just got to make it to the next level. And like, you know, here's break the 200 mile race down into these little segments of like, you know, make, make it through this section, make it through this section. And before you know it, it was, you know, five of us for the last hundred miles of the race. Wow. Right. Well, let's, uh, let's head over there, get back on some gravel. And my first question is about what tire pressure I should be running. Yeah. Let's do it. Right, tyre pressure then, Ian. I mean, I, I know, I feel comfortable knowing what I should run in all conditions on the road, but I'm, I'm at a, well, I don't really know what to do when I ride gravel. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the biggest things that I've learned coming from road to gravel, where I know the tyre pressure I'd run, run on the road, but especially now with, you know, tyres getting bigger and, you know, a road like this is a perfect example of this tyre pressure right now, which you probably have... I don't know. 60 PSI feels great on the road. Well, that's also what was written on the side of the tires. That's <laughs> yeah. what I went with. <laughs> yeah. Well, the minute you hit a surface like this, you'd notice instantly you start getting bounced around. Um, so I would definitely recommend running lower pressure, you know, yep. depending on your weight and stuff, anywhere between like 30 and 45 PSI. Um, but you have to look at like where you're riding. If it's a road like this the whole day, you could probably go a little bit lower. If you know you have a mix of road and pavement or road and you know gravel, you can you can drop it down a bit. You know, kind of a good rule of thumb though is you know on a surface, you know on the pavement, you can just kind of push. You want your tire when you're pushing down, you want to see the edge of the tire kind of bow out a bit. So you know as you kind of let the pressure down, you know you could yeah, I and mean, you could even drop it down a fair bit more than that. It's just going to give you more more cushion, a little bit more, you know, traction, especially if, if the surface gets looser. So and really, on this sort of thing, around 30 PSI, you reckon would be good? Yeah, for someone your size, I mean, 30, 35 PSI would probably be... It's going to be the most comfortable, yeah. Right. I'll just do, do the back ones <laughs> yeah. as well, then. You've got about 90 in there. These are 45 mil tyres, by the way. So we found a kind of technical uh, left-hand corner here on our route. And I thought it would be a good opportunity for you to show me sort of how it's done, tell me how to do it. Because one of the things I've found in the gravel events I've done is that I've got like relatively, you know, good fitness from, from the road. I've got the power, but where I'm really lacking is my technical like ability. I don't know how much grip I've got or anything or like, you know yeah well we've sorted out your tires so you've got lower <laughs> pressure so that, that'll help significantly and i think when you when you come into a turn it's really about you know what's the best and the fastest line and the safest line and you see here you know you have these bigger bigger rocks where you know you want to try to avoid those and like you know, we've got some loose stuff we've got some like fine gravel but you can see on this turn there's also a little bit of a bank to the turn so you almost can use the curvature of the road to actually use like a velodrome and actually, you know, kind of ride the turn. A bit like a burn. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the last thing you want to do is be going through a turn fast on the outside of it and you're sloping, you know, you're leaning your bike and you're on the outside of... Yeah, like the adverse camera. Exactly. Like, taking yeah. it away from you. Yeah, so on this turn, you know, if you can take this inside, you can see there's fewer big rocks here, so you're going to have better traction. You're not going to hit a big rock and get your wheel thrown. And then you can kind of ride this inside curve you know, all the way through until it straightens off. And this is a perfect, this is a perfect example of what you encounter in, in gravel races and gravel events. You're coming off pavement, you're going super fast on a downhill, so you feel confident, and then you immediately, you know, you may not know what's coming, and you drop off onto this, you know, chunky, loose gravel, and, you know, you re instantly realize you're going way too fast for the surface that you're about to hit. So it's also important to, you know, be aware of that. And if you're going to cut speed, cut it while you're coming off this pavement rather than, once you're on the gravel, because the minute you lock up a tire on this, you're uh, probably going down. Great. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> right, well, you can show me how it's done, and I'll give it a go. All right.
Ian, is there anything that you do that's specific for the, the setup of your bike for, for gravel races? Yeah, I think specifically for racing, like having quickly accessible, you know, tools, tire plug, CO2, you know, that makes such a big difference in a race when more often than not, people do have some sort of minor mechanical issue. Usually it's a puncture. Um, you know, so I have my CO2, which I can actually just pull straight out of this bag. I've got tire plugs that actually just bar end. Um, yeah, we can pull those out. Yeah, so there's tire plugs in there that I can just plug in the tire and then got CO2 in here. And I've also got a handy little uh, SWAT tool down here. Oh yeah. So I've got all the multi-tools. So really I don't need to get into any pockets, any bags to get anything to repair. repair. Like, I mean, if you have a repair beyond a CO2, a plug and a few Allen keys, you're probably in a lot more trouble than, <laughs> you know. If you're gonna go to these events, a lot of them are self-nav. So make sure that you have your head unit source, you know, make sure you have a, a route downloaded. And even in training, it's a great way to practice, you know, also knowing how zoomed in or zoomed out you yeah. want to see, because, you know, we've been here today riding around, we've made a few wrong turns. Um, but if you're racing, that's the last thing you want to do is, you know, be head down, flying down the road and not see a turn coming up. Yeah. So making sure that you're familiar with your head unit and, and practice riding and training with it. So, you know, kind of the depth of, of zoom you want to be able to see for, especially how fast you ride. You know, if you're looking at it, you know, you can see the whole course. You're probably not going to see these fine little turns on, you know, roads that are kind of meandering through. Yeah. It's a good tip. I, yeah. One that I should probably take heed after today. I've, I've taken us on a couple of wrong, wrong ones. Well, we've, uh, we've come to the end of our route. Cheers, Ian. I, I tell you what, while we've got some pints, it seems appropriate for me to ask you about your top pro-level nutrition for tips for, for gravel. Yeah, well, beer and, and gravel racing do go hand in hand, um, preferably after the race or ride. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of these, these gravel races are long, so your nutrition is it's incredibly important. And like I said, you know, knowing your equipment and knowing where things is, it's also important to practice your, you know, gravel nutrition in training. You know, so what some do you of these, do then? Like uh, I eat a lot and I eat frequently, you know, especially because there might be times in, in an event that you don't, you know, you can't necessarily access your pockets, you know, because you're on a rough road, or you're on a descent. So it's easy to go like miles and miles without thinking about eating or drinking. So in terms of tactics, Gravel's a totally different discipline and style of racing to a lot of things people are used to. Like what would you what would you recommend? I mean, I think the biggest difference between traditional road racing and gravel is that you know the races are longer and it's much more a race against yourself than the competitors. You know, really, it's only the last you know 25% of the race where you're actually racing against the people around you. You think about the majority of it; it's you know looking after your equipment, your nutrition, you know yourself, and you know, trying to mentally think about, okay, how can I, how can I personally go the fastest I can over the course of, you know, 150 miles or 200 miles? You know, I guess Colin Strickland explained it to me and I'll change the terminology, but he said, you know, if you go to an arcade and you have a pocket full of, you know, a hundred dollars, you know, you're going to stay at the arcade a lot longer if you're just playing the $1 game. The minute you go play the $10 game, like you're just throwing away $10 for these massive sprints. Yeah. But if you're just $1 at a time, like you might be at the game all night. So yeah. slowly spreading out your, your efforts over yeah. the course of the event is, you know, that's the way you win these races. Well, that's great. I guess the moral of the story is don't, don't spend all your pennies at once, which is uh, so, good. Go, <laughs> go your own pace. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much, yeah. Ian. Cheers. It's been great riding with you. And thanks not for, uh, you know, putting me in a hole and dropping me in riding at my pace much appreciated and if you enjoyed this video and um you've liked what you've seen then please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to see more like this and let us know your your gravel tips down in the comments below and um we'll see you in the next one right um cheers what, what are we drinking next i don't know <laughs> <laughs>